Welcome to Uncommy Goods. The pandemic of 2020 exposed America's reliance on Chinese-made goods. Not only were we short on critical life-saving equipment, much of it from China ended up being defective. We were caught with our face masks down. They played us. Why is America handing off production of critical goods to China and what can we do about it? Here on Uncommy Goods, we expose the nefarious misdeeds of the Chinese government. Prison labor, suppression of human rights, theft of intellectual property, imperialist actions towards other nations, the list goes on. Let's hit them where it hurts. Stop buying goods made in China. And it's not all doom and gloom over here. This show celebrates the makers of Uncommy Goods, the stuff made right here in America, maybe even in your own backyard. Meet the people behind small American businesses, learn the secrets of their success, and how buying American goods supports innovation, local communities, jobs, and economic opportunity. And I'll even crack a few jokes while we're at it. Let's make it in America. I'm your host, Lars. This is Uncommy Goods. All right. Welcome to episode 23 of Uncommy Goods. Get a grip, victory grips. That's right. Today's guest on Uncommy Goods is Victor Pellegrino, the founder and CEO of Victory Grips. Victory Grips produces 100% American made grips. Now, what are grips? Well, straight from the Victory Grips website, grips are the gear you wear on your hands for protection and to help you hold on to a pull up bar or rings for skills such as kipping or butterfly pull-ups, toes to bar, and muscle-ups. I can only do two out of those myself. And as a former CrossFitter myself, I wish I'd known about or used these grips to not only prevent those awful blisters and tears I used to get in my hands, but also for the performance boost in my CrossFit movements that you get when your grip is more secure. Victory Grips, Victory grips offers a variety of styles, and the website has a ton of videos and tutorials on picking the right grip if you're not sure. Also, Victory Grips, most importantly, is a small, independent American business, and I love what the website says. Your support of Victory Grips helps up livelihoods of families in Iowa and Georgia who truly care about the products we create and the athletes we serve. You can't get better than that. With that being said, I'm honored to have Victor Pellegrino of Victory Grips on the show. Thank you for joining. Thanks for having me. It was my pleasure, and I was pretty excited to come across uh, your business. You know, you were recommended to talk to by James Hobson of Spider Chalk. He was on the episode 21 of Here Comes the Spider Chalk. Uh, so just love to learn, and I think our listeners would too, you know, how did you get started making your victory grips, and did you intend to make a 100% USA-made product? Uh, the... Well, first, you know, how, how I got started um, doing the grips, uh, I was... A gymnast growing up, and that was the sport I identified with most, even though I did other sports. Um, it's the, the sport I loved the most. Um, and through my years of uh, being a competitive gymnast, I got into fitness because I enjoyed um, the way my body was developing. I enjoyed um, understanding physiology and, and human performance. So I ended up studying that in college. I've worked in the fitness industry all my life as a, um, pretty much all my life since I was literally 15 as a trainer. And, uh, so just like any other, uh, fitness enthusiast uh, or professional, I discovered CrossFit and I discovered CrossFit through a fellow trainer and he and I, um, ended up owning an affiliate uh, together. Um, you know, I, obviously I drank the Kool-Aid as a lot of people do with the, the CrossFit Kool-Aid. I've been there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so, you know, we, in the, in, uh, so, so, you know, prior to that, um, actually, you know, a little bit within this story, I ended up having a, um, getting a, earning a master's in, um, design management from the Savannah College of Art and Design, also known as SCAD. And so, during the course of having this affiliate, uh, I came up with the concept of the grips and with a, a long, you know, during a drinking session with my buddy, we would have these creative sessions. He went to SCAD as well. And so we would have these creative sessions over, you know, some bourbon and get the creative juices flowing. And the, and so 
you know, once I conceptualized that, it became this obsession, you know, because I was able to combine uh, my gymnastics and my design and my love of CrossFit all into one and started prototyping right away. And, you know, it wasn't until, you know, after a while that I, you know, I realized I had a product that I could actually end up selling. Um, so the intention, you know, once I kind of got that intention of, I'm going to actually start a business through th with this, it was definitely 100% going to be a US based American made product. And where that comes in is I'm a former Marine, or a lot of Marines will say once a Marine, always a Marine. So I am a Marine. And to me, you know, that, you know, being a Marine is that was fueled by a, a passion for the country, a patriotism. And, you know, one thing I learned in the Marines is you always take care of your own. You, 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 know, you bring each other up. And that carries over into this philosophy of being an American-based business because I want to help people within our neighborhood, within this country, to be successful, to help them, uh, to help them earn a living, to create with them, to contribute to the, you know, to the prosperity of you know people within our country. So that is that's been the motivation and will continue to be the motivation behind being a U.S. based American made product. I love it. Uh, you know, I think you definitely embody the uncommon goods ethos, uh, supporting your community, uh, coming up with an innovative product. I like <clears throat> that you have this technical acumen background from the school of design and, uh, applied that to build, bringing a new product to the market. Uh, had there been anything like that before in the industry? Uh, I'm an American made product. Is uh, that, an American is made that like grips product. Uh, there. Okay. So I will never talk bad about a, a competitor because I think our competitors lift us, you know, lift us up to a new level. Um, it's just part of being, being in sport, you know, and sport and business to me are very much the same. I view it the same. So, uh, so when I talk of my competitors, it's not putting them down, but I will say this, there are American based, uh, companies that are in that in the grip game, so to speak, but in, especially in the CrossFit space. However, none of them, they're made overseas. They're, um, they're made in China uh, and ours are not. And so, you know, the one thing that sets us apart, you know, to, with your question is one, we're a true US-based company. And then two, it's, we're the only grip comp company that is the grips are designed by a gymnast. Um, so, which it is for me, it's kind of hard to believe, you know, because grips started in the sport of gymnastics. So, you know, um, so, you know, there we're, uh, you, you know, a gymnast uh, designed many um, grip company and a US based company. And that's what sets us apart. I love it. You were the first one to do that. Yep. That's great. Um, so I pretty sure, you know, along the process, there might've been some challenges to, you know, coming up with this product and developing it and producing it, maybe some roadblocks. And we just had uh, Kent Foster join, who's your production partner. So I'd love to learn a little bit more about the process. Uh, so welcome, Kent. Uh, I'd love to learn a little bit more about the process Thanks. you that came across to develop and produce this product. I'm sure it was pretty tough in the beginning. Any tough times? How did you overcome them? And how did you meet Kent Foster? Welcome. Yeah, Kent. that's it. Thank you. Yeah, that's a that's a great story. So you, you know, one thing with uh, manufacturing in the United States um, is it's not as I guess so necessarily intuitive uh, to start a U.S. base or manu um, a manufacturer product in the United States. You know, typically you could go to China, you could easily find a manufacturer in China and they have this full suite of uh, manufacturing capabilities and everything is pretty darn easy. It's like, that's what they do. But in the US, you have to be a little bit more creative. You have to be um, a little bit more persistent and trying to find those manufacturing partners. So through the rabbit hole of research and just, just to me, it's like, I'm not afraid to talk to anybody and I will be persistent as hell to find what I'm looking for. 
and it was just by accident, I think, I really feel like it's very serendipitous that I found Kent um, through this, um, this one company I was talking to that was, I was trying to print on leather and they, this, this woman named Ann, she was really great. She goes, I'm going to put you in touch with one of my uh, beta testers. And, and he's, she's said that he has a business that produces leather, um, leather based goods for the uh, like collegiate branded goods. Uh, And he, so he's one of our beta testers. He has capabilities. I'm going to put you in touch with him. And then that kind of just started this great relationship with Kent. You know, we're very, we're cut from the same cloth in terms of, uh, of uh, creativity, um, love country. He's uh, he is a, uh, a veteran in, from the army. And so we just hit it off. I mean, our conversations instantly started like hour and a half, two hour conversation conversations. And so that started a great friendship and it started a great partnership. He's a true partner. That's great. There's no Marines army rivalry going on there. Oh, we give each other oh, shit dude. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> you know, first of all, let me just do an audio check. Can you guys hear me okay? Ab- absolutely. Yeah. And, and Kent, thank okay. you for joining. Uh, didn't introduce you earlier because uh, there were some technical issues on my end. So I really appreciate sure. uh, everyone's patience on uh, forging ahead. Well, part of it is I move a little slower than you guys do. So it took me a little longer to get everything. Of course, you're in the Army. <laughs> See, there we go. You know, I didn't think we were going to start off like this, Vic, but we can go there if you'd like. Uh-oh. Hey, Marines, <laughs> first in, buddy. <laughs> Keep up. <laughs> well, so, all right. I'm going to leave that one alone. All, <laughs> all right. I guess the um, Army takes yeah. the, the higher road. Well, we just feel like if they want to go in head strong, let them have at it, and then we'll be right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, touche. <laughs> uh, so... It, you know, Vic and I, the whole deal was that um, I remember getting the call like it was yesterday. And here's this, I'm going to call him a young man because he is compared to me. I am the old <laughs> man. I can say that. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sometimes. He just full of just, just oozing creativity and determination. And it was such a breath of fresh air for me. Um, Collegiate market is a very interesting market. It's a very tough market. And I was not, nor could I, going to compete with China. And unfortunately, by far and a large, the products are made in China because you can get fast numbers for pennies on the dollar. I wasn't going to do that. So I went the high road like Vic did, unknowingly at that time. And I produced products that were made in Iowa by Iowans for Iowa College, that was our shtick. Um, and I had this technology through Ann's company to put graphics on leather. And so we started talking about printing and and uh, Vic wanting to do the printing. And of course I asked him, well, what do you know about printing? And uh, there was a short silence on the phone. And so I said, well, how about if we collaborate in essence and you do what you do and I'll do what I know to do. And we started that way. So we started doing some light graphics for, uh, they were custom uh, labels actually to go on the straps, the grips, for teams. Um, and then after that, we had some equipment in house it's called the die cutting press, swing arm press, very old technology, uh, but it worked to cut out leather, to cut out uh, components that we needed to produce our product. So I asked Vic, well, how are you cutting out your product? Because they were using leather hides uh, and we communicated how that was being done. And I said, well, how about if we could do that for you, uh, ramp up your production? I was using scissors. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I was trying to be nice. (laughs) Um, So they started sending us leather hides and we started doing the cutting for them. And then it went back to Vic. And of course, Vic, you can see behind him. He, he He's a hell of a scene. I just want to let you know. <laughs> right on. Oh. Pretty handy with the sewing machine. I, yeah. yeah. Well, luckily, you know, with the grips, I, all I had to do was sew in a rectangle. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> 
but yes, I, I ended up understanding how to operate a sewing machine. Luckily, my wife had some, uh, some home ec classes or some, some background in sewing. And so she taught me how to do the basics and uh, I ended up making them. Like I was literally cutting, cutting the grips out with scissors out of the, out of the leather, out of the leather hides mm -hmm. and sewing the Velcro and the, the various aspects of the grips. Um, I was doing it all myself when I discovered Kent and uh, luckily he's like, yeah, I, let me do this. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. <laughs> awesome. Well, we just, we, we recognize we, we each had our uh, qualities to bring to the table. And, and Vic is just an incredible visionary designer. Um, and I think I've mentioned this before, uh, before we started, I, I live vicariously through Vic Hoff because what he does is amazing. And he has this energy that I still have some, but probably not <laughs> at the extent that he does. Um, and so we found this great partnership where he sends me what he needs to have done and, and we just do it. Mm -hmm. You know, you figure out, you have to MacGyver sometimes, you have to uh, reach outside the boundaries to figure out how can we do this? We have done that. Yeah. And so Vic does what he does and brings new things to the table. We collaborate, collaborate how to put those together. And it, it's very symbiotic and... Um, I, I am very thankful to have Vic in my life because he's, he's brought new energy and, and life in a sense to me that it's waning because to find somebody with the qualities like Vic, it's a rarity. It, it really is. So I'm very blessed to have him uh, as well. I think he likes me from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you know, Ken. Yeah, Ken, you know, through this process, it's been awesome because he's become like a father figure to me. It's great. It's been a great mentorship. It's been a great um, uh, friendship and partnership. And what I think, you know, one of the things that I realized with doing an American-based uh, made in the USA company is that, you know, because manufacturing, the manufacturing capabilities and even the raw materials for that matter are not readily available in the United States. Unfortunately, we, you know, we, you know, we outsourced so much of the manufacturing capabilities. You know, this the the putting together and the raw materials. You know, it's like to me, if you look back in history, one of the you know the with the um, one of the themes I think that made the you know the greatest generation. You know that. Um, that Tom Brokaw, I guess, coined the greatest generation, you know, the, the people that, you know, that fought World War II, fought on the front lines, but also fought in, you know, on the home front here, manufacturing all the equipment and everything. One of the big things that was made that made our country so strong during that time was the manufacturing capabilities. The fact that we were a manufacturing powerhouse was so important, fundamental to the success of the country economically and also to the war front. So, but after that, somewhere along the way, we ended up outsourcing everything because it would bring more financial prosperity to the, to the upper echelon. And so you, we ended up losing a lot of, the, of our middle class through this outsourcing, but we also lost a lot of our, I would say, our creative genius, um, or just our creativity in general. So one thing I have found with <clears throat> manufacturing inside the United States is that you have to be very persistent if you're going to do it, and it's kind of like it's like trying to make an organic food. You know, there are so many things you got to do. But you also have to, but one of the glorious things about it that I found is that you end up finding these people that are just as passionate about making something inside the United States, um, making a U.S.-based product, because these people are hungry for creativity. They want to learn. They want to help. They want to be inspired. And we have found, like, it's been through Kent that we found, like, I found from a manufacturing standpoint. But then on the pro other aspects of the product development from like the materials, like to me, I always say this game, the grip game 
is 50% design, like how it functions and, and what it looks like and so forth. And then 50% of the materials that it's made out of. And the, so, you know, finding the materials that they're made out of has been extremely difficult to, to source uh, in the United States. And to be totally transparent, um, there are two materials that we have that are still made overseas. It's from a Japanese company, but you know they they do manufacture them in China. But two of them that we have are U.S. based. But I am and we are um, in R and D with a company here in the United States to help us develop the materials that I could then replace the ones that are being made in, in overseas to make them in the United States. So it is a persistent goal to be 100% materials, manufacturing, everything inside the United States. But the cool thing is because we're trying to do that and we're trying to, you know, we're trying to get those, those materials made in the United States, we're making the materials uh, better. We're making them more high performance and so it's like we're truly creating you know, and we're truly creating this product from scratch and bringing back that ingenuity, that American ingenuity back to the forefront. And I think that's one of the most special things I feel about this, about this company, this project that I, I call it a project because it's ongoing, this, um, that we're doing with Victory Grips. It's like because it is fueled by American ingenuity and friendships. I love that. Uh, especially, you know, if you can't go a hundred percent, at least start, have a product that has demand. And then eventually you can start building out those components to make it a hundred percent us made. And I see that a lot. Um, I'm talking to a company that makes turntables and they, uh, they're like, well, not everything is us made. And I'm like, that's, that's a little bit beside the point it's you're getting there. And you're, like you said, you're fostering creativity and ingenuity on the American home front to build a higher quality you were talking about the um, the the threading or mm -hmm. for, for the grips, yeah. And I'll just jump back a little further. You were talking about you know your relationship with Kent, you and Kent, uh, you know, great appreciation for each other, strong partners, passionate, and I can tell there's a lot of trust there. And you you wouldn't build that relationship if you were trying to you know send the specs over to China and have it shipped <laughs> yeah. over. Uh, there'd be like it would just be a pure you know white labeling of something mm -hmm. made by somebody you don't even know. You don't even know what the working conditions are like. So that's the best part about uh, making in America. There's a lot more transparency. And as you said, I like that drive to ingenuity to start rebuilding stuff in America that, you know, isn't available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quite one refreshing. Thing that, yeah. Ken has a lot of experience with sourcing things overseas and working with overseas partners. Um, I would love for him to touch upon that, but, you know, just real quick, what you said is, you know, and just in terms of intellectual property overseas, you, you know, we're pat, we have a utility patent. We have several utility patents on, on, on our, um, on the product. Um, so in, you know, protecting our IP is very important. Um, but you can't, you know, with China, you get in a minute, you send it over there. You're going, you're opening yourself up to a whole lot of, intellectual property um, theft, if you will. I know that theft is a, you know, you know, it's a very harsh word, but really, honestly, you're leaving yourself vulnerable to being copied. Oh, you know, absolutely. It's so, a huge problem. Right. But like one of the things I really wanted Kent in this conversation is about is because of his experience with, and, uh, with other endeavors that he's done with overseas partners. And so that's, you know, I think he brings a lot of insight and I think that would be important for the, your, um, for your audience to hear. Well, I'll jump on that then. Um, <laughs> I have, of course you knew I would. I have in the past, oh, a good 12 to 15 years of experience of export management where I worked for a company for a long time and then I started my own sourcing materials from all over the world to either bring here or in many cases at the time when U.S. product mattered, uh, we would put those together and we would ship, ship those all over the world. But what I found I became an expert at, and it took lots of time, was the ability, because I can't be an expert in everything, nobody can, 
but I can be finding the right sources and the right people to give us what we need to produce uh, inevitably the final product. And I had done that for so many years, it was second nature for me. And a lot of that really matters from the standpoint that, for instance, the thread of which we are using, that is manufactured in the United States. By far and large, the bulk of the thread, something as simple as that, also comes from the Far East. But there are locations in the United States, and it takes time to factor in which is the best for what you're doing. And we've done that. So because of that experience, I have the ability to, when Vic says, hey, can we do this? I get on it. And I, if I don't know personally, I'll find the person who does know. And then we'll, we'll move forward with that. And that, I think, brings a lot to the table. You have to be a jack of all trades in a sense but an expert on finding what you really need and what really works. No, that's great for sharing. And uh, I think that's why Victor said, I need to have Kent on this call uh, an interview <laughs> because uh, it does seem like you are providing a very valuable uh, component. And that's what a great partnership is. Everyone brings their own strong suits uh, to the, um, uh, you know, to the business. And, you know, my previous interview with a company called Wild Bar, you know, the first thing he said, the most important thing to succeed in, in this, you know, making a USA based product is having a great team and everyone has their specialty, you know, being it someone that knows how to put together the ingredients and then someone that can help market it as well. And uh, so having a, someone, you know, Kent, like yourself, a great production partner that can really re reach out and seek out those sources for finding products uh, and components and to source those. To me, that seems invaluable. Well, I appreciate that. I, I want to just step in for a half a minute here. But what really matters with everything that we do here, and it was how I was raised, I'm sure there's uh, some similarities with Vic, is regardless of what you're trying to do, you have to just do. You just pick yourself up by your bootstraps, which my kids say, Dad, you don't have bootstraps. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. You, you get the metaphor there and, and you have to carry on because what we're doing, if you don't have bumps in the road, if you don't have paths to, the, to make a decision on, then there's no skin in the game. And it's the blood, sweat, and, and sometimes tears that make it work. It makes you determined not to quit. And we did, uh, it was a year ago, July, a, a short uh, trailer uh, for how we got started. It's on uh, Victor's site, our story. And there's two things in there that captivated me immensely. And I've told him the first thing out of his mouth was, it was just an idea. It was just an idea. At the end of this trailer, he says, I can't stop. I'm not going to stop. And that kind of determination is what melds us, in my mind, to keep going. And we get enthusiastic about better products, out designing what competition that they might call competition out there. There's nobody that can hold the candle to victory grip in this market, bar none. Uh, I did watch that video myself, and I got to tell you, I was I was definitely moved. Uh, and I'm going to put a link to that in the show notes. It was the Victory Grips R story, and uh, I think that that in a nutshell will describe the ethos and passion behind the company. So it was very moving to see. Thank you. Um, so I'm sorry, Victor. No, I just said, thank you. <laughs> oh, no, my pleasure. Uh, so I have an idea where you came up with the name of victory grips, but can you tell us how you came up with the name? <laughs> my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so we were, you know, we were just hanging out. I wasn't right? thinking about your wife, sir. Yeah. So <laughs> we were, because we were, uh, we were just hanging out. Yeah. thinking about you know i'm starting the company um and in you know just uh you know to turn back the clock real quick um when we i had the crossfit affiliate i ended up buying my partner out and uh and but and so it was my wife and i were that were running the um running the gym and we ended up saying you know we need to you know let's go ahead and sell the gyms so you we could focus on or i could focus on developing the company Luckily, she had a, um, a, great, a great job in, in corporate America. Um, so we lived off her salary as I got the company off the ground. But during those formative stages, you know, we were, we were like, what do we call, <laughs> what do we call this thing? Um, and she was like, 
Victor, victory grips. How about victory grips? And I'm like, sure. You know, it's a play off my name. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, and then it, it, it worked. <laughs> so I, we're like, yeah. I love it. That makes it kind of endearing. And, you know, it's kind of cool to name a company after yourself, but a little bit of a twist. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're talking about your CrossFit gym ownership. I just realized the past three interviews, including this one, everyone has either owned a CrossFit gym or currently owns one. So it's a recurring theme. Um, yeah. The, all the interviews I have are people in the fitness business, people that are passionate about taking care of themselves. And in turn, I think that means they can take care of other people. And I guess that means, you know, creating American based businesses and you know, there's that determination and focus. And I think anyone that is strong into fitness, um, they understand hard work process, a uh, progress and iteration and moving forward slowly. It's like slow and steady. Mm -hmm. And eventually you'll get there. You'll achieve your goals. And that's a very common element that I see the right. people in the fitness world. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, um, you know, the, you know, you, you, you hit the nail on the head. There is a lot of parallels between, um, between the fitness world and also this company, because what I, you know, one of the things is, um, for the love of the game, you, you, you know, I want, in, in essence, I create these grips. So people within the sport or whether they're competing or just, they're, they're a day-to-day -day CrossFitter. They go into the gym and for that hour a day, they feel like they're an athlete or they're competing, whether they're competing against their fellow class members or whether they're competing against themselves or for a games athlete, they're, they're, they're competing because that's, the, that's what they do. That's what they do for a living. Um, regardless of who the person is and regardless of the ability, my sole focus and my sole motivation, my why, if you will, is to help people be better, help people perform better. Um, and, you know, you know, I, I, I don't compete anymore per se as like myself competing, putting myself out there, but is my way of being in everybody's corner to help them compete better, to help them be better. Um, same goes to, you know, just the operations and what I was saying before, you know, for the people that I work with and partner with, I want to see people be prosperous. I want to see people achieve their potential. And so that is my why, you know, that it's like, I want to create grips that are going to be awesome and I, that people are going to perform better and ultimately buy, because if people buy, then all the people that are in my corner helping me out are going to be prosper prosperous. So it's this really cool ecosystem. No, I love that. And, you know, just thinking about the, the grips themselves, um, uh, looking at your website, say if you're, you know, not a super fitness person, you know, you look at it, you see all these amazing athletes that, that are part of the Victory Grips team, you know, that might be a little intimidating to maybe a beginning gym goer, you know, do you think grips, the Victory Grips are for people that are maybe not CrossFitters? Well, okay, so, you know, the we truly serve and exclusively, exclusively serve the CrossFit market at this moment and in time. Um, that's not to say that the grips cannot be used for, you know, just what in the CrossFit world, we call them Globo gyms. Um, the Globo gyms <laughs> are, are, you know, your regular, you know, like your Gold's gym or your um, Anytime Fitness, those type of gyms, lifting weights, you know, doing three sets of 10 mass building kind of exercises. You can use them for that. You can use them for, you know, to protect your hands. Um, the cross, you know, and you can use them because CrossFit is so much more extreme in terms of the demands on your hands um, and the demands on your grip. Um, so yes, you can use them for, you know, lifting weights. I have a lot of friends um, that are that are not CrossFitters that are just people that lift weights that are into fitness. They're you know, whether they're trainers or not, um, and they use my grips because they're comfortable, they're intuitive, they're easy. We have various different styles of grips. Um, uh, th some are more suited for just lifting weights than others. So yes, to answer your question, you can use them for other activities, but they are designed specifically for the demands of, um, for the, the, the regimen of CrossFit. Okay. And that's a great lesson there too, because what you have there is a very passionate customer base. Uh, people that CrossFit are very into it and it's also yeah. a community. And so, um, you know, when I was a CrossFitter, it was like you hung out with your fellow CrossFitters very often. And, uh, you know, the joke is, how do you know someone's a CrossFitter? Well, they tell you within, you know, 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And they don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Another good part about CrossFitters is uh, they can make fun of themselves. And, uh, and so, 
uh, part of that is it's important. You're trying to make a product for everybody that you might not find a market, but if you have that important niche that you can focus and target on and they're going to be passionate. And mm -hmm. so that's a great strategy, you know, might not be for everybody, but it's definitely for CrossFit. And if you can also use it, you know, in the gym elsewhere, it's a good fit as well. So it's, that's good to know. Yeah. Um, curious, you know, how has the pandemic affected your business? We, we actually grew. <laughs> wow. We, we actually, we took, okay. So everything closed down in April of last year um, of 2020. That's when everything kind of, you know, closed down. We were, that was the only month we were down. Um, and we actually grew a percentage point the very next month. And then, but we count, we kept on growing. You know, the main reason why we were down is because people were not able to get to the gym. People, because, you know, that's where they worked out. But then one thing we noticed is there was a huge run on, on home equipment. So, you know, Rogue Fitness, is, you know, who outfits uh, the, basically all the CrossFit market with, uh, with gear, with, uh, you know, with rigs and pull-up bars, so forth. Um, all, you know, they had, they were, they're sold out of everything. They're still sold out of a lot of things like dumbbells and so forth. So everybody during that time, everybody was like, CrossFitters are like, I have to work out. It's like my, it's like breathing to me. So they started outfitting their gyms. And once we started seeing, you know, on, on social media, everybody building their home gym and that building up of their home gyms was synonymous or, you know, parallel with our sales going back up. So people, you know, they will, CrossFitters will find a way to be able to train because it is just so much a part of their life. And, and then I think that's also, also the reason why we are, we are so successful as a company because people are that dedicated to it and we match that dedication. And so that, that um, symbiotic relationship and that energy, the energy flow between us and our customers is, is very palp palpable. And so it's, you know, because of that, we have, we have grown this year. We have grown a lot despite not being able to do events, but it's great. It's very, it's very humbling. It's very exciting. And it's extraordinarily motivating because now I know it's like the customers won't stop. And if they're not going to stop, you bet your ass, <laughs> I'm not going to stop. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's like, I got people like Kent who depend on this company you know, and, and I got my family depends on this. And so, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful, you know, for, for, um, for the dedication of everybody else. And just, you know, thank goodness we didn't, we, we, we were only down one month, which is great. No, that's, that's amazing to see. Um, and, you know, I said earlier, I'm a former CrossFitter, but I'm also a gym rat. And so the mm -hmm. gyms here in San Francisco closed down. And so I'm, I'm working out all the time because it's, it's just ingrained in me. And I'm so glad I bought a kettlebell like 10 years ago, because I know, I know they've gone up like five times in price mm -hmm. and you can't even get them. So, uh, that's a very important thing. So Kent, have you seen a, a huge increase in uh, production as well? We have, yeah. and yeah. I take, I take the challenge at any time for that. And uh, to go back <laughs> a couple of years when we had smaller equipment, uh, we were getting ready to roll out a new tactical. And I knew at the time we needed to be ready. So I took the foresight and I ordered some large equipment, uh, literally got here, let's see, Vic, wasn't it about a month before uh, we went to the games to, to roll that out? Mm -hmm. And so we have to be on our toes all the time here. Whatever Wendy sends, we'll get it done. And that's the biggest challenge I have is we can do that. We have a great team of guys here. Um, they will go to the nth degree to make sure that we meet any requirements necessary for Vic and company because we are their supply line. We are their lifeblood. Without us, they can't do what they do and vice versa. So we have seen a really nice uptick for 2020. It kind of shocked me actually, because we had the down for a while and everybody was running around trying to figure out what to do. I even, 
I've been in fitness all my life, not the type of fitness CrossFit. If I was about 15 years younger, I probably would. I've had some physical challenges in my life that I worked through, but even I, I got an Echo Bike from Rogue finally because <laughs> I said, Vic, which one am I going to get? Which <laughs> one do I need? And, and he says, well, if you're going to get one, this is what you get. And then, oh, let me tell you, you want to challenge Lars, you get yourself an Echo Bike. and then <laughs> I'll, I'll, look, I'll look into it. Yeah. So yes, we've had a great success with the volume here and I love, uh, we're ready. Um, we've probably doubled in volume almost every year, except for the, the last year. And if we continue to double, let me tell you, I have to have a new building real quick. <laughs> wow. But you don't get that um, type of growth and, you know, people supporting other people and, and their families by again, outsourcing to China. Nope. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think I got one idea of this answer, uh, and that is to find a passionate customer base, uh, an industry where the, the customers are passionate about what they do and it's important to them to, to do it. And that, you know, that is the CrossFit and the fitness. So I'm thinking aside from that, you know, what other advice would you give aspiring entrepreneurs that want to make a hundred percent USA made product? Uh, persistence. Um, persistence is key. And I think persistence in any endeavor that you're trying to start from scratch is um, it's, it, it, it's fundamental. You have to have persistence uh, and you have to be curious and you have to be patient, uh, but it comes with a lot of rewards. So if you're starting and you know, you're having a company and you want to have a USA business uh, made in the USA, don't give up. Um, there's going to be challenges, but the rewards are, are tremendous because you know, you, you, it might take a little longer, but you will be that much more agile um, and with being able to create pro um, new products. Uh, and then, you know, not to mention, you know, the, what, you know, the relationships that you build in the process, you never know where that's going to you know, where it's going to lead. It, it's, it's a very exciting journey, but it does take commitment and it does just takes persistence. That makes sense. I, I see that a lot. And, you know, I've been asking, uh, you know, the other entrepreneurs I've, I've met on the show, I go, Hey, you know, did you ever want to give up? Was there, and they're all like, no, no. Like I was, <laughs> no. I was going to, I was no going to find just the answer till the end. And I'm like, okay, maybe I should stop asking that question. You know, but I think it's a good question. I think it's a really good question because it's like, is there any doubt in your mind? If you, you know, it's like, no, you know, I think if you ask anybody, anybody that's driven, anybody that is, has a goal in their mind, they're very passionate about that. Um, and they're competitive. It's like, no, 100%. I, I have it in my head. I see it in my head. So therefore it is a reality. <laughs> you know, it might not go the way you think it's going to go or, you, or the way you envisioned or as fast as it's going to go, but it's going to happen. Um, so it's just, it's kind of like the way I compete, you know, it's, you know, it's like, I'm going to do this. And if you're in my way, you were going to get moved. <laughs> as Kent said that, he said yeah. that the other day, it's like, get out of my way. You're, if you're in my way, you're going to get moved. So it's, yeah. it's, and we have, we both have that mentality. So, which I think is awesome. Uh, you know, Kent is, yes, he's, he's a bit older than me, but we're, we're both fighters, you know, we're, we're, we're yeah, <laughs> we're on it. And there is never any reward without risk and effort. And if my opinion with that question is Lars, if you have doubt in your mind, then perhaps you need to rethink what your focus is, because if you're doubting yourself, then you don't have enough uh, tenacity, if you will, to pursue. And that's okay. I've been self-employed my entire life after Uncle Sam with a couple of short years with uh, an export company. Then I went out and did my own thing. There's been lots of peaks and there's been a whole bunch of valleys, but you keep riding the storm. And look what I found. I got victory. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. And Kent, I like what you said. Um, if you're ever doubting yourself, you should maybe revisit uh, what you're doing. And I always had a little motto myself was, you know, nothing good comes easy. And, you know, the all the easy stuff, it probably isn't that meaningful. And so uh, 
it's just really refreshing to see both your passion, dedication, and you know, unwavering dedication to achieve success. So I love that. So we've been talking about grips, you know, uh, your business, you know, what kind of other interests do you have, you know, outside of uh, victory grips? Uh, surfing. I love to surf and I love to do yoga. Um, I'm a mover and, you know, just like, I love anything that, mm-hmm. and, and, um, that gives me a physical, um, exhilaration. Um, so I, you know, you know, I got into, uh, you know, just through CrossFit, you know, I think every CrossFitter needs yoga <laughs> just because it's, <laughs> it's kind of like the other end of the spectrum to, you know, to help prevent injury, um, and, and longevity, uh, and, you know, then surfing, but, you know, I'm a family guy. I got my, you know, my wife, Wendy, um, uh, Kent alluded to Wendy. She is, uh, my business partner. She is, runs the operations. She's COO, CFO. Um, so I got her and I got a, my six-year-old son. So, you, you know, to me, I'm a family guy. Family is first. Um, so they, you know, so they are my biggest interest. Um, and then I got my other hobbies and, and so forth, like surfing and yoga and music and food and that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, that's to me, you know, engaging in life and all these other activities just brings in more creativity that I could fuel into, um, into, uh, the product of victory grips. It's just kind of has, you have to have a well-rounded life. I love it. It does definitely adds a lot you know you're doing something it's important to have a business that supports all your life's passions as well and you become a little more well-rounded oh absolutely yeah. and you know it's it, it's a god man i'm so blessed to have this you know this company because i live like i'm retired <laughs> yeah. i really do yeah i live i you know we we were in atlanta we um i started the company in atlanta that's where i had my crossfit affiliate um and we in Atlanta is four hours away from Savannah, um, where I went to did my did my master's at at SCAD, Savannah College of Art and Design. And there is a barrier island called Tybee Island, um, right by Savannah. And so when I was in in my master's degree, we would always come to Tybee and hang out and enjoy the water, enjoy the beach. Um, and so when uh, when I was in Atlanta and my wife, when we were living in Atlanta, we would just come over to Savannah and Tybee just for a quick, long weekend. And so once the company took off and we were like, we don't have to be in the city, we we moved to Tybee. <laughs> and wow. uh, so um, so yeah, it's like kind of you know you know kind of choose the you know the lifestyle you know if if your lifestyle is good everything is good so you know so we move you know i live i live on tybee island i you know if if the surf is up you know it's very inconsistent here it's not like living in uh, it's not like living in california or hawaii so but when the surf is up you got to drop everything <laughs> it's Absolutely. Like I, will, I will postpone meetings or whatever and it's like i'm got i'm out surfing um so so yeah, you know, this company has allowed me many freedoms that I do not take for granted, um, but I will absolutely indulge in every single opportunity I have because of that. <laughs> wow. Are you guys hiring? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a carpe diem life. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just, yeah. I love that. I and you get that freedom by having your own business. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, entrepreneurship is not for everybody, but if you could do it, Oh gosh. Yeah. Do it. I love sure. it. Great. Kent, how about you? Well, I've got a few things that we, you know, we live in the country in Northeast Iowa, about five miles from the Minnesota border. And a lot of solace comes just with that. I can walk out of my shop. We have about six acres and we're surrounded by farmland and just have that peace. But I too, I, I did martial arts and I was in uh, the weight room on a regular basis as I went through life. Um, I do a lot of Qigong now. I find that my centering place. And I find it interesting that both Vic and I have that similarity that it, it helps give you that focus. So that's one of my things. And of course, uh, my wife is an awesome chef. And uh, so I like the food part, which I'm suffering a bit now. I have to... Um, <laughs> deep food a while because yeah. I've got a few more pounds than I want, you know, the winter bat, as they say. But, um, and I also, uh, one of my passions is shooting, uh, long distance shooting, as well as competitive shooting. Um, 
did three gun competition for a few years. And I teach concealed carry. I'm an advocate of uh, Second Amendment, First Amendment, uh, the amendments that we have in our constitution. And I take pleasure. I can walk outside. I have a range on the property. And if I have one of those days, I think I'll just go <laughs> concealed for a while. I love it. I love it. A shooting and surfing. Yeah. Uh, uh, in yeah, this there crowd. you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I like both. I've done it. I've done a little bit of surfing myself. Uh, you know, I live not too far from Santa Cruz, and you know, I'm taking up a little sport shooting myself. Uh, very amateur, of course, uh, but it's a lot of fun. It's one of those things that you work at and you you progress and get better, and you have to dedicate your your time and money um, here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is great. Very I true. really yeah. Uh, so. Uh, Victor Kent, you know, where can people find out more about you and Victory Grips if they want to learn more? Uh, go to victorygrips.com uh, and you'll have, you'll see, you could buy everything you want to know about our grips is on there. There's a lot of uh, um, product information, a lot of education. There's a lot to read about, you know, to understand the functionality of grips. Um, and also on our YouTube channel, the Victory Grips YouTube channel, um, we're doing a lot more videos lately. Um, we're looking to, you know, we're just starting to build that up more and more. Um, so victorygrips.com, uh, YouTube channel, Victory Grips channel. Um, and, and then uh, on Instagram, our Instagram is very active and also Facebook, but more so Instagram. So if anybody wants to get a hold of me, um, I answer the, uh, the messages on Instagram personally. Oh, wow. Um, so the, you know, that's a true fire way. Just so if you, if anybody wants to ask a product question or anything, um, I'm very, <clears throat> I'm very engaged in, uh, in, uh, on that, on that platform. Uh, I think it's important for me to have that personal touch with, um, with our customer base. Um, and I'm just a fellow CrossFitter, you know, it's where, you know, even though it may look like we're a very big company we're not you know we keep it grassroots um and have that personal relationship um so um instant instant message me on um on the Vic victory grips uh instagram page and uh ask me anything you want i love it victor the most accessible ceo in america <laughs> that's important you're never you're ne you're never that important <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good lesson i think that's another um uh you know tip for aspiring entrepreneurs is you know focus on the end goal and and supporting your business and the community around it and yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, being accessible absolutely you know that that helps drive passion for a company because when i talk to people they go oh man i love these small companies and there's always a good story behind it and I got to tell you, when I watched that, uh, I alluded to earlier, when I watched that our story about Victory Grips, I got a little choked up as well. <laughs> and uh, so it's really meaningful to meet both of you and learn more about um, your company, your partnership, and how you are supporting uh, small businesses, communities in America, and trying to make the best product with integrity and love and passion behind it. You, you know, it's, you don't see that everywhere. And so that means a lot. Yep, it absolutely does. I would agree 100%. Um, Vic's got me for the rest of my life, whether he <laughs> wants it or not. Yeah. <laughs> I think Army and Marines can uh, can get along for uh, this venture. Uh, yeah, yeah I at, him. at the end of the day, we fight on the same team. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. One, one common mission. We just approach it from different angles. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. Great. So, uh, you know, in the interest of time, I uh, want to wrap it up here. Uh, so, Victor, Kent, I can't thank you enough for being on Uncommon Goods. Uh, it really meant a lot, and I uh, hope we stay in touch. And really, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah thanks, for, thanks for having us on the show. It's been great. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, thank you, Lars. Kent. I appreciate it. Thank Take you. Care.